All right, the first thing you're gonna need to do is remove the wheel assembly from the hub. So remove any type of plastic cap you got in the way and the eight seven eighths lug nuts and pull both dual rear wheels off. All right, once you get the wheel assembly off, just set it off to the side there and stack them because you will be using that later. If you're just checking everything out, you would stop here. But as continuing on, we're gonna go through with the rotor the caliper, the bearings, the races, the seals, everything that you need to do to service this back end except for changing the fluid. So the next step is to get these 21 millimeter caliper bolts out. There's two of them. That one and the one directly below it. 21 millimeter, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So this is the passenger side. So left would be going forward. Put the wrench on it and just tap it down with a hammer. Make sure you don't bang anything else up back here. You don't want to hit nothing. Just go ahead and hit it and loosen both of those bolts and then you can take a zip tie or a bungee cord and tie your caliper off up here on the shackle or spring. Okay, once you have the caliper assembly off, you can go ahead and just hang it from the rear. Now on this side, the bottom bolt was a 24 millimeter, the top one was an 18. The other side, the driver's side was 18 as well, so Looks like somebody's been in here and changed these pads already, so they could have lost the bolt and put a new one in here. But just be aware that your bottom bolt could be a 24. I doubt it is though, because it's a totally different size. And they weren't as tight as they were supposed to be, because these bolts are extremely tight. 190 at the bottom and like 150 or something at the top, or 116. I have to look at the exact specs, but they were nowhere near that. So the next thing we like to do is offset the axle so that this side is up more and the fluid drains back into the diff in the other side because you're gonna have to bust out these eight bolts and they're about 95 foot pounds they come with yellow loctite from the factory so you may have to heat this up a little bit or if you have a really strong impact just you know lefty loosey like always pull this whole this whole axle shaft will slide out this whole thing has to come out. It will drain some fluid, put a bucket under there. Once this is out, you can start taking out the other components to get the rotor and hub assembly off. Okay, once you remove the eight cap bolts on there, these ones were not tight, which leads me to believe that someone was in here for sure. So the rotor was changed at one time. We're gonna see what the bearings look like. Either way, they're getting replaced because the other side was garbage. The axle shaft runs the entire length of the differential to the center chump pull it out get a rag as you're pulling it out and kind of be mindful not to bang it up because it is heavy probably 40 50 pounds so go ahead and just slide it out and then put it away for now because you don't need to do anything with it okay once you slide the axle out you will see the locking ring locking spring and locking block along with the outside tapered roller bearing we can already see that there's wear on the shoulder of that we can see carbon and grime and gunk build up. So this was not that clean when the mechanic went back together with it. You have to have a special tool to do this. If you do not, you need to stop and take it to a qualified person to do it because as you can see, they beat on it with a chisel to get it tight. You can see the edges knurled up right there and right there. So while you may get away with it, over time you can see the wear in there. And I'm sure when we take it apart, we'll see the wear. So go ahead and just undo this snap ring. It's real simple, just lift up, pull out on it gently and it'll pop out of the threads. Slide that block out. And then this is the tool that you're gonna wanna use. 5045 or similar. It's machined to go right into there and it should only be finger tight really because it's 22 foot pounds once you go back together with it. That's all brand new stuff too, it's 22 foot pounds. That's why you need this tool and a torque wrench to do it. You can't do it by hand. So get everything out and then you can slide the rotor and hub assembly off. Leave a few threads of the nut on there and you're gonna have to slide it forward and kind of hammer it out and then the bearing will fall forward. Once that happens, you can take the nut out, just put your hand there and catch everything as you're pulling it off. So all we did was leave the nut on there, a few threads, and pulled the whole assembly forward. It popped, you'll feel the pop. It'll come off of the axle tube. Take the nut off, 
put your hand in front to catch the bearing and slide the whole assembly off. It is heavy, so be careful. All right, at this point, you have the hub rotor assembly off. You'll be left with the parking brake system and part of the seal that stays on the axle. You have to get this off with a hammer and a screwdriver or whatever, just beat it off. Careful not to mar anything up on here. Inspect everything. A little bit of burn marks, and that's from, again, not being able to torque it properly. So this will get filed down with some emery cloth just to take the burnish off. Clean everything up really well. Next, you just want to take off the parking brake assembly. Right there, there's some clips. Those just pop off with a flathead screwdriver. Pop both clips off and take it out as an assembly together. It will come out together. Okay, we like to clean everything off for the first initial cleaning with some brake clean, a quick spray. Just look for any deep gouge marks. There's none here. There's just light heat witness marks, which is just fine because you can't feel them. We'll hit everything with emery cloth or thousand grit sandpaper just to clean it up just inspect everything including these backing pads make sure they're all good and flat the other side had some damage on them so you just take a flat file and file them if they're not damaged leave them alone and then go ahead and just cover this with a plastic bag because you don't want it exposed to the elements and we'll move inside and start working on the rotor hub bearing and race assembly all right, we're now gonna work on getting the rotor separated from the hub assembly, the seal, the races, and the bearing out. You're gonna start by putting the rotor flat in the ground. If you're gonna be reusing it, just put something underneath it. If you're gonna be changing it, just follow on through. Same thing with the bearing. If you're keeping it, you don't wanna hit it. You wanna just pop that seal out with a seal puller. We're not gonna keep it, so we're gonna bang the seal and bearing out together so it drops down, and then we're gonna bang the race out as well. All right, you will just continue through and you see the race in there. Go ahead and just get your punch on the edge of it and knock it all the way down until it falls out and it'll drop straight down. Okay, once you have knocked the races out and the bearings, which are there, you wanna go ahead and take out these eight E-type head bolts. Now you don't need the special tool to take them out. You can use a 14 millimeter suggest using an impact socket six point it'll go right on there and take these out these are also held in with loctite from the manufacturer so they're torqued to 114 foot pounds or so with loctite so it will take a little bit to get off the alternate route you can do is take the tire and just stick it back on here and have it sitting in the tire and break these free but it's always good to just do it with air tool Zip all those out, and then you'll be able to separate the rotor from the hub assembly and start cleaning the hub assembly up to get ready for installation of the new races and bearings and seals. All right, after you separate the rotor from the hub assembly, take the rotor, get it over to a clean, or sorry, take the hub and get it over to a clean area and get all the grease and everything off, all the grime. Take a wire brush and clean all those surfaces up. On the flange, not on the inside, you wipe that down with a rag. Keep that nice and clean with a rag, no abrasive materials. On the outside here where the bolt holes are, you can go over that with a wire brush. Just clean all that up and wipe everything down. Get it fairly clean. You want it decently clean so you can install those races and drive them in straight. All right, once you got the hub cleaned out, you want to inspect where the race is pressed in here. And look for any cracks or gouges or any deep heat marks and... Little witness marks are okay, but nothing crazy sticking out or bad. Make sure everything's cleaned out, and then you're going to want to take the race and the side with the lip that has the stamp on it, and that's the race number 45220. Go ahead and just set it down in there and tap it flat with this, and we're going to use an 117 millimeter disc, I believe, to get it flat. All right, at this point, all we could do was drive the race in flush with the hub lip. This is a 117 plus millimeter driver. It's the one from Harbor Freight. We got it level and flush, so we're going to take it back over to the press and show you the tool that we made to press this all the way back in. Okay, so what we did was we took the old race from the other side and ran it through the bench grinder 
and kind of just took a couple thousands off and that allows us to sit just around in there to push that all the way down and to do that we're gonna have another backing plate from that icon set sit right on there and you want to get it square and lined up and then start pressing okay we have everything centered around and you're just gonna push it down slow make sure there's no binding everything should go in nice and smooth and about halfway down you want to stop and check it and make sure that everything is good okay we started it by hand it's an 81 millimeter tapered driver you can drive it in by hand with the handle uh, it is not super difficult but it's also not fun we have a press so just want to go ahead and evenly press it down and make sure you're watching it go straight and square the whole way make sure that you don't bind anywhere on the sides and then you'll bottom out you'll feel the, the tension different right there a little bit more and we'll release and that's free in there take it out inspect it and look and make sure it's seated all right it's pressed down and this is the fit we were talking about you just ground the other one down has some play in there to slide down and it pushes it past that lip pressed area get everything cleaned out and then we'll move on to assembling the rotor to the hub assembly all right remember earlier when we said to stack the tires this is the reason why so you can lock the hub into it and go ahead and torque down those 8e style bolts with a 14 millimeter to 114 foot pounds torque them all up with some loctite and you're done okay we're going to work on packing the wheel bearings 45291 is the one for this truck. We want to push the grease in between these, this opening here in the middle. Push it down or up whichever way until it squirts out. Just smearing the grease on will not be enough. You will need to push it and force the grease in between the two cages. So we'll do a portion of it and show you and then we'll continue on. Okay, you see how we got it in between the rollers there by pushing it from the bottom in between the cage? You have to get the grease to come up in between all the rollers, all the way around in order for it to be packed. So continue on and, pull, and pack both bearings. All right, at this point, you wanna drop the lubed up bearing in there. You can put a little bit of lube on the race, don't go too crazy. The seal on the inner side here, that little lip, you wanna make sure that's dry and doesn't have any grease on it. And you're gonna to wanna to put the seal on there. Now you do not need the tool really to push it in because apparently these ones slid in pretty good, but the tool is there to prevent the lip from getting damaged because there's a seal inside of a seal. So basically it spins inside of itself while it's on the hub. So we'll get that thing set in and put the tool on top of it and push it down. Okay, this is a special tool you'll use. It's got a beveled edge to push the seal down there. Then you're gonna wanna take and rotate this inner seal and make sure it spins freely it's not going to be loose but it'll spin freely on the inside once that's done and you're sure move on out to the spindle sorry the axle assembly and start cleaning everything off and getting it prepped to get the parking brake put on all right you're going to go ahead and assemble the parking brake assembly exactly how it is when you took it off as an entire assembly be mindful of how the springs go in and how the star adjuster is on the back here, you're gonna put your two new mounting pins in, and then you have some tabs that are on the backing plate that are wear tabs. You're gonna put some grease on them if they're even. If they're not even, you're gonna take a file and just go ahead and file them down until they're smooth. Put grease in all the anchor areas where everything actuates, and then just go ahead and lay the parking brake assembly up on the back there. And you're gonna put one side in first, and then stretch the springs and work it over the other side once you slide it on. And once you get it up on there, it'll hold itself pretty decently until you can get these little clips on. Okay, once you get everything locked on, you will see the little stop tabs will sit on the little humps right there. Make sure everything's centered as possible for when you slide the drum rotor hub assembly on to get it over this. Make sure the star adjuster's all the way in and take note of which way adjust the parking brake. Once it's together, we'll be pushing the star adjuster down 
and that will expand the brake pads to go ahead and adjust the parking brake. So make sure the axle tube is cleaned off. You can put a little bit of grease on it and then we'll go ahead and slam the assembly back home. Okay, once you have everything cleaned off, you wanna go ahead and put some grease on the axle tube and a little bit where the seal is gonna sit up on the upper thicker collar. And this is just to allow everything to slide back nice and smooth. Have your outside bearing ready to slide in. Once you get the hub and rotor assembly up on there, you wanna carefully put it on. And it is heavy. Use two people if you need to because you don't wanna damage that seal. Try and go in as straight as possible and shove it back as hard as you can. And then set that tapered bearing in the front and that will keep the front of it from nosing down. And then you're gonna take a dead blow hammer and tap it back and seat everything before you go ahead and put the nut on. All right, you wanna put the lock nut on there and as you're rotating the entire assembly, you wanna tighten that lock nut down to 22 foot pounds with that special tool right there, 5045. It's a six sided axle nut tool. And most of the time you're gonna find that it is not going to line up with one of those keyways. So if it's not, you're gonna to wanna to just back it off to the next keyway. If it's more than 30 degrees, you're gonna to have to go ahead and loosen this all the way back up and retorque everything because you do not wanna bat more than 30 degrees off of this nut. So we're gonna go back and line this one up to that hole right there. Okay, once it's lined up, you wanna shove the little keyway in there, the little brass or steel keyway that we took out. Okay, once backed off and the keyway's in, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and rotate the hub and it should rotate pretty freely. You may hear a little bit of dragging. That is the parking brake. Very little because we have it backed off, but this should rotate freely with almost no effort. Almost no effort at all, this thing should rotate. Once that's in, you're gonna take your clip with the little hook side going towards the block and just fish it around onto the threads and make sure it's seated properly. Okay, and we have it seated in there properly. Just wanna make sure that it's down inside the grooves, locked in, it's not gonna come out. Go ahead and spin it again, it should spin smoothly. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the parking brake in the back, and you're gonna adjust the star adjuster until there's a slight drag. But go ahead and actuate your parking brake a few times first. Okay, the wheel should spin freely like this. You can hear a tiny bit of drag from the pad just ever so slightly, and that's just fine, that's perfect. You shouldn't have no excessive rubbing, and it should do a couple rotations by itself with no help. Go ahead and hit the EB, and there the EB locks it up. Release it, and you just got that little bit of contact that'll center itself out once you start moving and expand the brakes. The next thing you wanna do is get the axle shaft clean, and send it in there. And that's basically going to be the test of the parking brake system, because you're gonna put the parking brake on and these bolts have to go to 95 foot pounds with Loctite. So if the parking brake holds you putting the axle together, it's pretty good to hold the truck. All right, once you double check and verify that the locking bar and spring and everything is in there and this rotates freely, you can go ahead and set the parking brake Go ahead and get your clean axle here, put a little bit of grease on the end of it. Get your axle flange gasket ready and your eight bolts with some Loctite on it. You're gonna go ahead and just slide this straight on in and you gotta kinda like work it up and in a little bit, go nice and slow and it'll eventually seat. Set it all the way back and these eight cap bolts go to 95 foot pounds. Okay, once you have all the bolts finger started, just give it a quick rotation again. Make sure everything spins decently still. Go ahead and just snug these down and when the rotor starts to move, put your parking brake on and torque them to 95 foot-pounds. If the parking brake is set correctly, then it should hold while you're torquing the 95. Okay, once the rotor hub assembly is all in place and the axle is in, we torqued it down. There's the gasket and we like to mark it with paint marker around each one of the bolts so that we can visually see if something's happening, if they're getting loose or something like that. It's just good practice. 
Okay, so we're at the caliper assembly, the new one. And the easiest way to get this back on the vehicle is just going to be to load the caliper with the pads and slide it back on as an assembly and bolt it at the um, mounting flange here. Because getting the caliper slide bolts out are pretty ridiculous when it's on the truck because there's a spring in the way. So the easiest way to load these are to undo the bottom bolt and just swing the caliper open as you would on a normal vehicle if it was on the car. And the easiest way to find that is there's your bleed screw. Bleed screws go on the top. So that is the bottom bolt down here. Take that bolt out and swing the caliper open. Okay, with the caliper swung open, you're going to have your recessed spots here, four of them. Put your brake hardware in there. And then you're going to want to take some lubricant and you're going to want to lubricate all these flat areas where the pad rides on both the pistons and the opposite side on the caliper and grease all these landings after the hardware is put in. And then if these are lubed up enough, you can leave these and just put it all back together. Take note of how you install the hardware. The thicker part is on the outside away from the pads facing out. The smaller side is on the inside facing the rotor and that's on both top and bottom. Okay, as you can see, the piston faces are lubricated and the machine flat on the other side of the caliper. There's no need to throw grease all in the back of this backing plate. Just put it only in the contact areas there which are the machined areas and the surfaces of the piston. That's all that's needed. This particular brand, the tab stays on the outside and it just slides in from the outside with the curved side facing the way of the bracket. The other side is the same. It just slides in from this way and then you lower the assembly down. Okay, and this is how the loaded caliper should look. Both pads should be inside of the caliper and bracket. They will not fall out. They're held in place by their springs. Do not forget to tighten up the bottom bolt you took out to manufacture torque specs. Check every slide and make sure all the pads are seated properly. And just make sure that it moves. And as you can see there, it moves. Now we'll move it over and it'll slide right over, right over the rotor easily. And we're gonna bolt the mounting bracket bolts. Remember the bottom one is 190. I think the top is like 156. Put a little bit of Loctite on them as well. This is a heavy duty truck. You don't want things going anywhere. All right, the caliper is back on the vehicle. If you were replacing the caliper like we did, you would transfer the line over and then bleed the system out properly. Otherwise, again, the biggest thing you have to do here is make sure this thing rotates freely. You just hear that slight, slight drag of the brake pads touching the rotors and the parking brake in the hat just, just barely touching. But you can rotate it by hand smoothly and if you give it a hard spin, it'll keep moving. And that's both sides. Now's a good time to check your air pressure and mount everything up. All right, after you tighten down the eight lug nuts, torque them to 129 foot-pounds. This is current for the 2012 model year in 2022. The book has a wide range of torque, and I believe Ram had a recall on some of these lug nuts. So this current year, we can confirm that 129 foot-pounds for the lug nuts. In the book, it said 120 to 160, which is all over the place. So we hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.